Thank you very much uh, to um, Erwan and Xavier for giving me the possibility to give this, this lecture here. So it's really a great pleasure to be here. So I will uh, uh, talk about uh, topics on K3 surfaces. And I will give you, since it's a lecture, give you the content of, uh, of the lecture. So I will uh, start today with uh, short introduction about uh, the position of uh, K3 surfaces in the Kodaira classification, Enrique's Kodaira classification. Then uh, I think always today, I will give you several examples of K3 surfaces. And uh, in particular, so we will talk about, for example, complete intersection and uh, talk about Kummer surfaces. It's a very nice example of K3 surfaces, also related to, well, very strictly related to abelian surfaces that you have seen this morning. I will talk then about the basic properties of K3 surfaces. So finding again some um, important result. For example, you will see starting seeing how lattice theory plays an important role when you work with K3. And we will at least formulate subjectivity of the Peter map and Torelli theorem that are two very big theorems for K3. And then I will, this would be maybe today and tomorrow. And uh, then we will start uh, studying automorphisms. So some general facts on automorphisms. Automorphism of K3. And uh, then I will focus, I hope, uh, at the end of the lecture, on result on symplectic automorphisms. So if time permits, I will also talk about moduli spaces of uh, K3 surfaces with automorphisms. So let's start with a brief introduction, as I say. So let's say paragraph one. So the K3 surface is the Enrique Scodaira classification. So for me, um, surface is a compact complex manifold. So in particular, it's smooth. of dimension two. Okay, so we'll uh, maybe talk about singular K3, but uh, in general, what I'm saying always uh, uh, smooth. And um, in this first part, I will recall something that um, maybe you know already. So when one wants to classify, I say surfaces, but uh, this is not only for surfaces. One can do it for more in general. So an important tool to do that is you, is the Kodaira dimension. is a Kodaira dimension. So let's recall briefly what it is. And well, first, uh, before to do that, uh, um, I will say that a surface is projective, so I will work uh, most of the time in the projective setting. If not, I will tell you. So as a surface is projective, 
if uh, there is an embedding, again, you have seen this morning for try, an embedding S in some projective space, Pn, and as I said at the beginning, I'm here working always on, on the complex number. So we want now then to problem, so classify projective surfaces. So what um, does it mean, classify a projective surface? Well, uh, this go back to Enrique e Castelnuovo. around uh, 9010, okay. They give a birational classification of surfaces. Of surfaces. In fact, so when uh, uh, you classify curves, you classify them up to isomorphism. But when you start work with these surfaces, there's some new phenomena appearing, which is um, something blow, blow up. So let's say maybe rational classification, you know, this means, uh, this means, for calling, just for the notation, F from, so, so this means that uh, S uh, equivalent S prime, if uh, there is a F from S to S prime a rational map. And as I say, so an um, example of a rational map that uh, makes why one wants to classify up to rational isomorphism, rational map, is the um, blow up. New phenomena that uh, explain why one wants uh, want to classify up to, as I say, rational map, is the blow up. Okay. And, um, this does not happen, of course, so it does not make sense uh, to, to talk about that. So blow up, you know, you have your surface S from one side. You make the blow up, essentially you plus the point when you do the blow up by what is called a minus one curve. Let's say E, so this means that E squared is equal to minus one, and this is blow up. And then, so we will always consider in the, this lecture, so I will, um, uh, and E is morphic two pi one, sorry, forgot that. So in this lecture, I will always assume that um, we don't have surfaces like this, so that one get um, after blow up, but we always consider as minimal. Uh, always as minimal. S does not contain E, E is a P1, E square equal minus one. Talking about minimal surfaces. So I, I did a lot, a lot of transformation. If a surface contains these minus one curves, you can blow down to smooth point and then consider these surf smooth surfaces. So how to describe now the Kodaira dimension? So just for notation, so I will denote by KS, a canonical divisor on S, so I will always denote by S a surface, okay? So if uh, I change notation, I will tell you. So KS, uh, the canonical divisor. So I will denote all this morning by omega two S, the vector bundle of uh, holomorphic two form. on S, which is the same as the shift associated to Ks, okay? And then I can consider global sections So consider now global sections Global section. 
So h0, we know that this, s, oh yeah, s, ks. So I will switch often the notation from the shift to the vector bundle, so depending on what I'm talking about. Global section, and even more, consider global section. of twist of that, S tensor n to some power um, for n in n. This is also the same of O S n times the canonical divisor. Okay? And then when you have a section, take a, take a basis, you can define a rational map. So, one can define, so let's say, S1, S n, or S0, S n, be a basis. When one get um, a rational map, let's say phi uh, n k s, so this is a, if I projectivize this, this is a linear system associated to the NKS. Okay, there are the effective divisor equivalent to this. And so I have a map from S to some uh, projective space, so the, let's say PN, given by this section. And then we can define what is the, the Kotaira dimension, we call uh, the definition. So this is, uh, if you want, P of uh, a zero S O S N K S. And one should put, um, let's say, a dual here. So the definition then, which is the Kodaira dimension of S, of S, then uh, you take the maximum of dimension of this image. So the maximum over n, so this, um, this is integer, um, of image phi n k s of s, and maybe you take the closure, since it's just rational. Uh, sorry, yeah, dimension. About that, thank you. Max over n of the dimension of this. And um, this is kappa x, kappa s, sorry. And well, you have immediately some fact. So this Kodari dimension cannot exceed the dimension of s. So you can not only define for surfaces, but you can define it for varieties in general. So kappa s, so say maybe a remark. Kappa S is, uh, let's say, 0, 1, and 2. And if you have no section at all, so I just write the, the map, but of course you can have in this space nothing at all. So, so just uh, here, just the 0, it's a vector space. And so this uh, gives you nothing, so let's put minus infinity. And so when you classify surfaces, you can uh, then uh, classify them by using the Kodaira dimension. And so studying what happened with the Kodaira dimension is uh, minus infinity, zero, or one, or two. So minus infinity, as I say, means that this, um, uh, this, set, this set is empty, if you want. Just recall what happened for Kodaira dimension minus infinity, um, one and two, so our favorite case will be the Kodari dimension zero. So if the Kodari dimension is minus infinity, so recall um, the classification. <coughs> so we have a first case, so kappa s is equal minus infinity. So these are, uh, if you think about the, the projective space, for example, it satisfy exactly this condition. And in fact, these are the surfaces that uh, are rational, it's called rational surfaces. 
So this means that um, the rational 2p2, for example, all of the blow up of p2, for example, you get the del pesto surface here, here. Plus, let me just separate the two, even if uh, one can put uh, all here, rolled surfaces. Okay, so I decided to separate two just uh, to make maybe, um, to put some um, accent on the, on the case of P2. So this means that you have a birational map from S to C times P1, okay, where C is a curve genus of C is big or equal than zero. So let me put this case too. Of course, uh, if you are here and you allow genus of equal to zero, so any surface that is here is also here. So this is not a disjoint um, description somehow. But I just wanted to, to point out um, these two different uh, situations. So this depends also on, uh, on, the, on the geometric genus of the surface. But anyhow, so here you have a probably out of example in mind. Let's go now to Kodari dimension zero, which is, um, as I said, our uh, favorite case. So I will just say something very quickly, and then um, something more in detail, of course, during the lecture. So Kodari dimension zero. Okay, so this means the image is a point, everything is sent to a point. And here you have um, four kind of surfaces that you can have. So one you have seen already this morning. So let's say abelian surfaces. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Here I'm just in the projective setting. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Not, uh, not. Uh, don't go outside. So abelian surfaces. So these are C two modulo lambda with uh, lambda a rank uh, four lattice. And uh, well, we have seen uh, uh, this morning, but anyhow, so not every tori is projective. So again, a difference with the Riemann surfaces and curves. So there are tori that are not projective. Here I'm just considering, so that's why I say abelian surfaces, um, considering it's with some embedding in Pn. Uh, then you have um, K3 surfaces. I will not uh, say any, anything about that now because we have all the lecture to talk about that. Then uh, you have um, request surfaces. And since uh, one important point of our lecture will be automorphism, these are exactly, are exactly, are the quotient of K3 surfaces by fixed point free evolutions. We all describe it that way. So we'll, I hope to, to talk about, um, I will not talk about any surfaces, but this fixed point free evolution a little bit when talking about automorphism. And then you have B elliptic surfaces that somehow are related now to, to abelian surfaces, are quotient of that surfaces that are quotient, uh, let's say, of, of product of two elliptic curves. Let's say just uh, these are quotient quotients uh, of products e times e prime, where e and e prime are elliptic curves, are finite quotients. So. Uh, one take, um, well, these are all classified, so that's um, in Baniera de Franchis. Uh, 
think uh, 1987. So these are classified. For example, how does it look such a quotient? So you have a final group acting on one curve that acts on translation on the other one. And then you take the quotient here must be P1, and then you take the quotient, give you some kind of, uh, of BLDT surface. Okay. And um, okay, so, so that's all for, for codire dimension zero. Let's go now to codire dimension one, just um, very fast. So in this case, uh, Ks equal to one, so the image is a curve. And these are called proper elliptic curves. Uh, surfaces, sorry, Ks um, equal one. These are proper elliptic uh, surfaces. So as I said, this is sent uh, to, to a curve. And uh, so the special fact about proper elliptic um, surfaces is that they always have a, an elliptic vibration. So. Um, so, without going too much into the details, so they always have a, an elliptic vibration. So this means you have a, a map to some curve, and the fiber is an elliptic curve. But uh, when you say proper elliptic, so this should be different, for example, from a, K3 from rational and so on, because uh, while well, it exists, uh, while well, K3 surfaces that are elliptic, not all K3 surfaces are elliptic, so not every K3 surface is an elliptic vibration, but there are uh, K3 that uh, have elliptic vibrations. And well, the last class, which is the huge class, is the Ks equal to two which are the surfaces of general type. Somehow is uh, the more mysterious class. So it's uh, where there's a lot of work on structure surfaces of general type with given PG and uh, irregularity and so on. And um, it's, if you look at this classification, somehow it reminds you very much what, um, what is done for curves. Genus zero, genus one, and genus two. One can say that or bigger equal than two, better. One can say the curve of genus bigger equal than two are for general type. Genus one are the elliptic curve, and then uh, genus zero are rational, so it's uh, P1. So this is uh, how it looks like in, um, in higher dimension. <laughs> so let's go now immediately to start talking about K3. And um, well, one, First thing that uh, one has to mention when talking to K3, so if you have uh, never heard about that or very few, is why they are called K3. So let's go to K3 surfaces starting from now. So the name was given by Andre Weil in 1958. He was writing some report on a project, so you know it's uh, usual when one work on a project, write a report, and he was writing about this uh, beautiful object, and uh, this was given in honor. So I will just write so in honor of uh, the K2 mountain. in Kashmir. If you look in the history, so 1958, just uh, some year before, this mountain was climbed. So this had uh, make a huge um, publicity around that. And uh, it was kind of impressive. And Andre Weil found them so beautiful, or maybe some, sometimes I won't say so difficult as this mountain, that the, the name K3 came after this um, K2. So, in fact, uh, for the history, there is a K3 mountain in Kashmir, but it's not so high, so that uh, was somehow forgotten. In Kashmir, and um, in honor of 
three very famous mathematicians. That are Kummer. We will see when we talk about Kummer surfaces. Keller, heard about very much about this morning. And Kodaira. So the, the three Ks of, uh, of K3. So this is um, why this um, strange name of um, K3, K3 surface. The most easy example of K3 surface is maybe the following. I will give you an example, and maybe let's think about the properties of this example that will bring you to the notion of, uh, of K3, of the definition of K3. which is very very easy example when you study K3. The first one one should have in mind. Oops. Most easy example. Take uh, the Fermat quartic. Quartic surface, which is uh, the zero set uh, x0 to the power 4, x1 to the power 4, x2 to the power 4, x3 to the power 4 equal to 0 in P3. It's a very symmetric surface with, um, for example, very nice geometry properties. It contains, for example, a lot of lines. Example. And um, one remark um, immediately that um, it is smooth. smooth. Yeah, the <coughs> partial derivative, let's say this is F4. F4 have uh, no common. From zero, zero. So that's uh, what uh, any time I will talk about K3 again is smooth. So I will have uh, when I use polynomial uh, this kind of conditions, and um, we observe the following two properties of this surface. So first of all, uh, let's talk about the, consider the canonical divisor. So to compute it, let's, uh, let's consider a junction. If you take a junction, well, what is um, the canonical class of, uh, of that surface? is kx4, a junction tell you is a canonical class of p3 plus um, x4 restricted to x4. Well, let's look at, at that. So the canonical class of p3 is minus 4 times h. h is a class of an hyperplane section. And uh, x4 is 4 times a hyperplane, a linear equivalent to that. And so immediately see this is trivial. So let's say that uh, this is 0. 
So we have a KX4 is trivial. And um, second property, we want to stay inside the Q of S, which is a H1 O of S, which is called the irregularity. You know, when, when one classifies surfaces, for example, in that case, one can always give in two birational invariants that are the irregularity, which is H1 O S or H0 omega 1 s, if you remember in the lecture of this morning, it's global one fork. And the geometric genus, which is H0 of omega 2 s, we'll talk about in a minute. How to compute the regularity? Well, I will um, maybe say something that, um, that um, it's a bit more than just computing Q. If you use uh, the Lefschetz theorem, I will say something more than that. Even say that um, uh, KT surfaces are simply connected. Lefschetz theorem on hyperplane section tells you that the fundamental group. of uh, x, p1, x4, is the same of the fundamental group of p3, which is uh, trivial. So in particular, so x4 is simply connected. So this tells us that, um, let's say in that way, that, um, so the rank, of P1 X4, take the abelianized of the, the group, does not very much matter, this is the H1 of the homology. But then, this is also the dimension over C of, um, So this means then I can then try now everything over C and consider cohomology. Tell me that H1 um, X4 C is equal to zero. So they tell us that uh, H1 um, so zero is equal to H1 um, X C which is by Hodge decomposition, the H01 plus H10. Okay, this is H1 OS, sorry, is an S of course, X4 even, sorry, X4 everywhere. So this is X4 and this is H0 omega 1 X4. Here everything is projective, so scalar, so the, the two dimensions are equal, so that this tell me that um, this one or this one, one of the two is zero. So the regularity of x4 is equal to zero. So you can, there are different ways to show that. You can always also consider an exact sequence involving the um, regular function x4, regular function p3, and so on. I did it in that way because you see already something that, uh, some properties more that we will see very soon for any k3 surface. So this tells you that the irregularity is zero, and uh, maybe one remark again on the canonical divisor. On canonical divisor. So this is a hypersurface, so you can write down easily uh, how the canonical divisor looks like. So in the chart, um, let's say, so I just, um, or 
x1 different from 0, or let's say xi different from 0, df, dxj different from 0, one can write the two form corresponding to this, um, to this, to the global section as, um, let's say, writing this way, dxh, yj, dxk, df, dxj, where all the indices here, h, k, j, and i are different. This gives you a global form, which is never zero. Given zeros or poles, okay? So this tells you somehow that um, even something more, that you have a global two form that is um, never zero. Okay, or never degenerate. So if we are assuming the property that um, we are talking about, <coughs> so resuming, Um, kx4 is trivial, and the irregularity is also trivial. Okay. So we can now give now the definition of a k3 surface by using well by uh, while well, using these two properties of x4. So S, a compact complex surface. So again, for me, everything is smooth, is K3 if uh, Ks is trivial and uh, the regularity of S is equal to zero. So one can find equivalent definitions of that, because you say, when I was talking about X4, I was even you more showing that X4 is simply connected. And then I was um, showing that the regularity is zero. So this is uh, one implication is, um, is trivial somehow. The other implication is not so trivial because if you have that zero, you cannot see that um, you, it is simply connected. You, you have to kill the torsion to say that there is no torsion. So that uh, needs a bit more of work, but um, somehow not, not so much, not so much. So some remarks. So here, I am in the complex setting, so that's why here, when I give the definition, sorry, just um, go for a moment back in the, to the not projective setting, K3 surfaces are not all projective, okay? <laughs> so here, most of the time, I will consider projective K3, but uh, not all K3 are projective. Even uh, one say that the generic K3 is not projective, but they are all killer. Which is, um, however, very good uh, properties. And, um, well, how to go, one easy way to construct non projective K3 surfaces, just start with um, Tori. You will see you do all the Kummer construction that we are going to do, then you get something, a K3, which is a Kummer, so which is not uh, necessarily projective. Um, then another uh, property, um, as I say, so let me just write down. So one can show that the fact the irregularity, so this um, H0 omega 1 S, this dimension, so as usual, Small a, a, the small h denotes the dimension, okay? That's, uh, I did not write that because it's standard notation. One can show that the irregularity zero is equivalent to simply connected okay? As I say, one implication is what actually exactly what I did ab above. So this implies this, but from, from here to here, one has to kill um, uh, torsion. We will not uh, prove this um, now, but uh, we will see a very similar computation where we'll show that the second cohomology with the integer coefficient of a gate three is a lattice. So that 
you will see somehow how to go from here to here. And uh, yes, and since I was talking about the geometric genus, for SK3, the geometric genus which is a PG, which is a H0 omega 2 S is equal to 1. Just uh, to complete uh, if you look in the classification of, uh, of surfaces. Okay, so these are our um, remarks about that. And uh, what we are going to do next, before to give uh, general properties, I want to give you more examples. I think examples are always important to have in mind than to, to understand what happened more in general. Uh, I will leave some of them as an exercise, because uh, there are some computations that are very similar um, of what I'm, I was doing for quartics. So the next, um, let's say, very geometric examples are complete intersections. So let's go to the, to the second section, talking about um, um, complete intersections, so examples of K3. So complete intersection. Well, we have seen first, well, let me just uh, include here as complete intersection, quartics in P3. Smooth quartic in P3 are all K3, not only the Fermat, but any. You can do actually do a similar computation. You take uh, any in, in the sense I take a generic one, so I don't want the singular one. Then you take uh, uh, S23, I call it this way, a complete intersection. Of a quadric and a cubic. in P4. Again, I want this uh, complete intersection, so it means they meet transversally. So I want it smooth in P4. In P4. This is K3 again. And um, S2222, again, complete intersection of uh, three quadrics in P5. Okay, and this I, left, I leave you, uh, or we'll discuss on Wednesday, as an exercise to show that, um, that uh, these are K3. RK3, let's give you an exer exercise. Well, if you want the first part to show that the irregularity is zero, well, the proof is again uh, left shift. You use left shift to show the simply connectedness, and then the, the regularity is zero. And um, you use uh, many types of adjunctions and to show that the canonical divisor is, uh, is trivial. Okay? And these are all the complete intersections. If you start going to higher uh, PN, you can always find a, a K3 surface in any PN, but this is no, no more complete intersection. Okay? So then you get K3 in Grassmannian and so on. But um, <clears throat> there are more um, nice examples of K3 that I'm, I want to talk about. Which are the, the double planes. And then we will go to, um, to Kumar. So the K3 double plane, so we'll do the computation to see that it is really K3. So double plane, double plane, so we take a S, double cover of P2, so this is 2 to 1, 
which is uh, ramified on uh, azimuth uh, sexy curves. So we'll put here, let's say, C6. And we want to see that this is a K3. So let's uh, show that um, the canonical class is trivial and um, that the irregularity is, uh, is zero. So we want to show that uh, S is K3. Right, we compute then uh, we compute the canonical divisor. So I give a name to this uh, map, which is I. Well, we use the, the property of um, double covers. So this is the pullback of the canonical divisor of P2 plus the ramification. Okay, so the ramification is here. So we have uh, R is um, such that uh, so R is on an S such that uh, P of R is equal C6. And we have that pullback of C6 with help of this um, two to one map is two times the ramification. Okay, the, the two times come from the fact that you get a two to one map. So from this formula, you get the two times uh, canonical divisor is equal to pullback of two times kp2 plus uh, two times r. And this is, um, and we like that because two times r is the pullback of c6. But uh, well, now remind that um, kp2 is equal minus three l, l is the class of a line. And c6, uh, and uh, C6 uh, is um, six times the line. So if you look at here, so you have the pullback of that. So this is a um, pullback of uh, two times, so minus six L plus pullback of six L. So this tells you that is zero. Okay, so two times, we get that two times the canonical divisor is trivial. Now we have to think a bit um, about that the canonical class is then also trivial. Okay, so we, we got uh, two times the canonical class is trivial. What can we say about S? So, 2KS is equal to zero. We want to show uh, KS is equal to zero. So we cannot uh, say so immediately. The thing that we know is that uh, if KS is not zero, then you don't have a global section. Otherwise, if you get something here, you will get also something here, and this is trivial. And we use now some computation in, um, um, in topology to compute the topological and euler characteristic of S. So compute now. Uh, key top uh, S. So let's do the computation. This is quite um, interesting because uh, this will show us another property of K3 that um, we will see later. So you just use topology. So this is two times. This is a double cover that is ramified on C6. So the topological Euler characteristic of P2 minus, I have to take away C6. And I have to add E here, R. So 
so I replace so topological Euler Poincare characteristics, so it is an alternating sum of Betty number. This is three, so this is equal to two times three minus C6. So C6 is a curve of, um, of uh, degree six. So this is, um, sorry, uh, sorry, I miss everywhere, key top uh, um, C6. Top, I write just this. Okay, this is two times two G. This is degree six, so the genus is um, 10. Okay, so uh, this is 18. And, um, and I have to add the um, key top of R. This is um, the same as, as uh, key top um, of C6. So uh, this is minus 18. Okay. So this is 6 plus 16, and we find 24, which is um, not strange, even it's very nice because you will see later that this uh, does not change for K3. So we'll just um, claim that without any proof that all K3 are diffeomorphic, and in fact, so any time we will have 24. So this is 24, and um, how to use that? Well, uh, let's use now the another formula. So use now another formula. That tells you that um, key of OS of the structural shift of S. So this is H zero OS minus H one OS plus H two OS. This is equal to one divided by twelve. Ks square plus the topological Euler characteristic of S. So this is zero because two Ks is zero, so the square of Ks square is also zero, and so key top S we computed is twenty four. Twenty four divided by twelve is two, so this is two. But um, now um, we have this. Okay, this is the dual of that. So this is zero, and this is one. Okay. So I get that um, one minus H1 OS is equal to two, which is impossible, of course. Okay, this is bigger equal than zero, so this is impossible. And this, um, this was this contradiction, or even contradiction, was uh, coming from this, um, the fact of assuming that Ks is not trivial. So this implies then, so we get um, that um, Ks um, is equivalent to zero. And, um, and if you look um, again here, so Ks is equivalent to zero, and if one looks again in this, um, Equality, we can do the same with this, uh, this case. So you have two equal to this sum, so again two. So that's telling you that H1 or S is zero. And also that, so it's the same computation, that Q of S is equal to zero. So that we have uh, indeed a K3, a K3 which is a double plane. Okay, so if one wants, um, and then so I don't know, how much time do I have? I started. Okay, a few minutes. So I say just one thing and then we stop because we start again. So, and in that case, just uh, to tell you if one wants to give uh, an equation of a double plane. We will see maybe this example coming several times during the lecture. And, um, just to give you an idea of the equation in this case, an equation for, for S is uh, the following. T square 
equal to f6, x0, x1, x2, where c6 is the sextic ramification sextic, has this equation. And if you want, I see that in something in a weighted projective space. So p, 3, 1, 1, 1, something like this. This, of course, comes from the double cover, and you see that the ramification locus on. Again, it is a sexy. So maybe I stop here so and start again. Thanks.